So hi again. Uh, so in this session, we are going to understand the concept of realized compound yield. So what happens that when you are purchasing a bond, uh, it is giving you certain coupons, uh, maybe annually, semi-annually, and then you intend to sell it or, or you may intend to even keep it uh, forever with you. But then at different time horizons, it has got a different realized compound yield. So uh, this is a very interesting concept, a little tricky, but then once you understand it step by step, it's pretty easy. So the problem statement is like this, that we have got a five year coupon, which is having a par value of $1,000. Uh, it, it is giving us a 9% coupon uh, semi-annually, right? And uh, we can consider different YTMs, say 7%, 9% and 11% and we have to calculate at, at these time horizons 1, 3 and 5 the realized compound yields right so here we uh, first look at the problem for just one year uh, time horizon and uh, try to understand what happens after one year of this five year coupon so this is this is a, a five, five year coupon uh, so uh, after one year, uh, suppose uh, you want to trade this uh, coupon again in the market. So what exactly uh, is, is the price you should be seeking? What is the realized compound yield at the end of one year, right? This is a problem. Okay. And we'll consider here three different uh, um, YTMs, three different discount rates. One is... Uh, 7%, another is 9%, another is 11%. So uh, since coupons are being paid semi-annually, so we have to convert these annual rates into annual YTMs into semi-annual YTMs, right? 3.5%, 4.5%, 5.5%, 5 .5%, just divide by two the annual rate and, and you arrive at these nine by two and similarly 11 by two, right? Now, this is going to give us three, uh, three incomes. This investment into bond uh, give us, is going to give us three incomes. The first income is a coupon income. So what we get at the end of one year, since coupons are paid semi-annually, so we have got two coupons each of 45, right? So whether the, the YTM is seven, nine or 11, whether the YTM is 7, 9 or 11, we have got paid 90, 90 and 90, right? 45 rupees, two coupons each. Then you have uh, another income from this uh, investment, which is a capital gain, because after one year, you might have gained some capital, right? Now, this is interesting part of it. So how do you find out the capital gained at the end of one year? So the capital gain at the end of one year is, is found out by the present value of all the coupons that are remaining for rest of the period. How much is the rest of the period that we have given it over here? So five year coupon. So we are considering at the end of one year. So four years are remaining. But since everything is converted into semi-annually, so effectively it is eight years remaining. Effectively it is eight years remaining. Fine. And uh, and with that, you can find out the coupon of uh, rupees for a dollar forty-five PVI multiplied by PVIFA for uh, corresponding R. R can be seven, R can be uh, nine, R can be eleven, depending upon these three scenarios that we are considering, and you get the capital gain. Uh, you you plug in the value of PVIFA R percent eight years and and you get the PVIFAs, right? For example, if you want to calculate for, for say 7% YTM and uh, at the end of one year, so you get 45 uh, rupees coupon for next, you know, eight years. And this R here will be then seven. So this will come to 309.32. Similarly, uh, you get the terminal benefit, right? So thousand rupees at the end of the, tenure so thousand rupees at the end of eight years that you are going to get you multiply it by pvif for say seven percent eight years which will be like this one plus zero point zero three five raised to the power eight and you uh, subtract the the initial investment or or or, or the or the terminal value 
uh, which is uh, 1000 rupees because you know if you want to calculate the uh, capital gain you have to subtract the uh, subtract the terminal uh, value from it and uh, you add that uh, present value of the of the of the capital gain and you you actually arrive at the total capital gain which is nothing but sum of present value of all future cash flows there are two future ca cash flows here one is a coupon of 45 rupees to be received for the rest eight years then at the end of eight years you are going to receive this thousand rupees so all this summed up minus one thousand gives you uh, gives you a capital gain of 68 the case of nine percent is really interesting to see why so because nine percent means this is a nine percent ytm nine percent coupon so no capital gain right it's pretty simple at least for 11 percent you can calculate as we did in the seven percent and you find that when the ytm increases when the rate of discount increases you lose capital in fact why so because the present value is discounted at a higher rate and instead of you know getting uh you know a money more than thousand you get money less than thousand and and then you get a minus 63 so income one is clear income two is clear the third in income is pretty straightforward since we are considering it at at the at the end of one year horizon one year uh, is over so in this one year we we receive back a coupon of say rupees 45 right just six months back and you have to calculate the interest of that rupees 45 for the six months right so you plug in r equals 3.5 uh, uh, make it one and reduce 45 from it and you get the interest on interest income right so three income the coupon income is 90 the uh, the capital gain income is 68 and the interest on in interest income is two and thus what you get is the total return you get a total return out here right so the total return is uh, 160 over an investment of say 1000 so the you have to calculate for one year the realized compound yield which comes to 16 percent fine similarly uh, you can solve this uh, particular problem at the end of say a say three year uh, horizon so this is a three-year horizon case where the remaining time is uh, uh, less and the remaining time is only two years since it's a five-year bond and in those three years three years that have passed by you have got you know six coupons of rupees 45 each so this is your coupon of income six into 45 after that you have got you know four years left because it's a semi-annual uh, case semi-annual coupon payment case so four years left so you can plug in seven percent nine percent eleven percent again in this r to get the present value of all the future dividends then you get the present value of the terminal benefit which is again thousand discounted at say uh, seven percent then nine percent then eleven percent for four years and then you again subtract the the terminal value which is thousand and then you get your uh, uh you know capital gain income again uh, no capital gain in case of nine percent and uh, negative capital gain in case of 11 percent ytm hope that's clear now we can see the third uh income again similarly here so uh 45 rupees uh, coupons are going to be have been paid uh for say uh, uh, uh five years to you how come five years because you know three years have already passed by and we are going to count uh, you know uh, uh, not three into two six but the but the five years because the recent dividend is is not uh, has not completed any tenure only those previous five dividends have have completed their tenure so 45 multiplied by uh, the multiplied by the the future value interest factor of uh, annuity of of uh, uh, r percent r can be say seven percent it can be nine percent it can be eleven percent for five years you calculate that and again you subtract you know whatever 45 into five uh, coupons that you have uh, uh, so so the value uh, that comes now is 25 and uh, uh, 
this uh, interest on interest income is certainly more than you know the one year case and then you you add all the three up and then you get the total income again you get the the, the realized uh, income reduce of 10 percent 9 percent and 8.44 percent so as more years have passed the realized compound yield is growing another thing that you see is that uh, you know as ytm increases your realized compound yield keeps on falling because you're discounting at a higher rate but as the years that pass by increase your your realized compound yield uh, you know increase right so next we see uh, we have seen one year case we have seen uh, 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 three year case now we are going to see say five year case five year is the is a coupon uh, maturity period right so this case is also very interesting let's see how it unfolds for us so for five years you see you have got all the 10 coupons that you could have got 45 into 10 45 into 10 45 this is your coupon income pretty straightforward to calculate capital gains so it's it's five year horizon right you have already completed five year after five year you know uh, there's no uh, discussion of capital gain because you are considering the time horizon values so so after five years there's no capital gain because soon as as you uh, reach the end of fifth year you uh, get the coupon expired right in the sense that you get the terminal value go home and investment vehicle is is over you have got down the investment vehicle so this is zero capital gain is zero so interest on in interest income will be highest here right as you can see from this okay you sum them all and and you arrive at the total total income right okay so uh, then we see uh, in the in the case of you know five year horizon uh, we got uh, uh, um, so so somewhere uh, in in the three year horizon we were getting a higher uh, uh, return but here we we have seen that the returns are lower right so somewhere in the middle the returns are realized compound yields were higher they they declined as as the years passed by are are left right so the the point here is that capital gain is calculated on the face value you know not on the on the fair value right so fair value will be in this case 1083 because coupon is is nine percent and uh, oh, oh, there there are different ytms but uh, you know uh, we'll calculate the capital gain on thousand uh, rupees power value okay so so this was about the uh, case of a realized compound yield hope you liked it please like subscribe and and share